Good morning, fishing girl. We are down at the beach again. I'm gonna do some more filming. I'm gonna have a few lines out. We're gonna see what happens. Uh, I, it might be calm enough to do a float rig, so I might try that. Either way, I'm just gonna put some double drop rigs out and uh, try a couple things. I've got some salted bait with me. I've got some frozen shrimp. I've always got my fish bites and glass beads and those are always producing whether I have live bait or not. So hoping to get on some fish while we're filming today. We'll see you in a few minutes. So I'm super excited today to try out some new sand spikes that were given to me. They were donated, sponsored um, by a membership of the community that I'm a part of. And these sand spikes are made by uh, Brian Curlett. And I can put his information, his uh, contact in the description of the video down. I'll try to put it down below so that if you're interested in these sand spikes, um, I know they're super high quality. He makes them himself and uh, they're really good, but I'll, I'll step back so you can hold them up and see what I'm talking about. But they're very sturdy, very lightweight. They've got this foot pedal here that you can use your foot to just push down on it to get it into the sand if you're having trouble getting in. You don't need a mallet, don't need, uh, now of course you start out by, you know, back and forth motion like we did with the other sand spikes, but having this little foot pedal is going to be a game changer. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put one in the sand. Here we go. So we've got our two sand spikes in place. I'm going to rig up some poles and we're going to see what happens. So we've been filming for a while and my lines have been sitting there for a while. This one is slack and that one's getting pulled a little bit. So I'm gonna check both of these and we'll see if we got some fish. <laughs> that must have happened while we were filming. I have no idea what happened, but my entire setup is gone. It looks like it got bit off. Pulling. Start backing up. Whatever it is, is pulling pretty hard. Let's see what we end up getting. Oh, it must have popped off. So I'm guessing that I probably had something pretty big for it to totally cut off my whole line. So I'll have to go back into filming and see when this happened because that must have made <laughs> that must have made it go uh, off pretty well for that to happen. Okay, so I put a new rig on this pole. Let me go grab it real quick and I'll show you what I've got. So this is a fish finder rig that I made. Um, it starts out with a regular little barrel swivel. And then it has a five aught hook, oh, almost hooked myself, on the other end that I connected by a snell knot. And I'll show you how to do snell knots. And then I've got a piece of cut bait. I do have a piece of um, fish bites on there just in case something eats the cut bait off. There's still something there. And then this is just a swivel with a pyramid knot. I've got a bead there so that it doesn't directly hit the the, um, <laughs> so that it doesn't directly hit the hook itself. But this is free flowing. This is what they term a fish finder rig. So I wanted to bring you out here on the beach so that you can see what I'm looking at. And this is how to read the beach. So one of the things that I mentioned, I believe in another video about how to read the beach is the um, on a low tide or high tide, looking for where there's points. And so as you can see, there's people way out there. The sand juts out, there's a point there. That might be a good place to fish. There's a hole right here in front of that. 
If I wasn't leaving soon, I would probably be moving over there and either fishing that point or fishing this hole. Um, another way you can look at the, the shoreline here and you can see where it juts in way down there. So look at the contours of the beach. And today we have some good examples of whitewash. You can see there's a guy out there surfing. Right next to him is a run out. And you can tell that there's a run out there because you've got the whitewash kind of goes all the way out. Another way that you can read the beach, if it's really calm, look at the shell lines. So here we've got shells. The shells are going to get pushed up. I'm going to go up even further because this isn't really the shell line. There's lots of different lines on this beach where this tide comes in and out. But you can see like the shells are up here. It's kind of consistent. And then there might be areas where the shells are down here or they're way up here. So if you see shells getting here's shells over here they're kind of getting pushed up this way but if you find a place where the shells are getting pushed up quite a bit that might be a good spot to fish that might be an indicator of where the run out is so i'm just going to come down here because i know there's a run out in this area i could tell from how the tide looked earlier so we're coming along here and all of a sudden we see there's some shells here. All of a sudden we see a bunch of shell activity. And these shells can be an indicator that there is something here. And if we look at the line, okay, you can tell that this spot here is there's a little bit different shoreline going on from back where we were a minute ago. And another way that you can tell where there's runouts in the underwater where the fish are going to be is by looking for bait jumping, bait activity in the water. Maybe fish are like jumping and, and eating the bait and you can see all that activity in the water. You can also see birds diving if you're out here fishing. You see birds diving somewhere. Well, that's a good indication of that's where all the bait fish are. And that's where the fish are going to be too because they're going to be trying to eat those bait fish that the birds are going after. So look for birds, look for the shell line, look for bait activity. There's lots of ways that you can read the beach other than just the waves. There's more ways that you can tell where the fish are. So we weren't able to catch any fish today, but you know, this is what it's like in real life. Sometimes you watch these videos and people are catching fish after fish after fish, but what you don't realize is they were out there maybe four or five days in a row, maybe five or six hours at a time just to make this little 20 minute, 15 minute video that you watched where it looks like they caught fish after fish, but they worked hard to get those fish. And so some days you're gonna catch them, some days you're not. I went months one time before catching anything and it was discouraging, I'll tell you, you know, when you spend a day at the beach and you don't catch anything. We did, I did have uh, something break my line off though. I did have uh, what I felt was something on the other line that came off. So, you know, this is called fishing. It's not called catching. People will tell you that all the time. But here's the great thing from, you know, that I'm teaching people is that it's the beach. So no matter what you catch, it's really fun. It's just great to be out here. It's relaxing. You got the waves, you got the sand, and um, whether you're catching fish or not, it's still uh, just a fun pastime. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this content, push that like, push that subscribe. And we'll see you next time, fishing girl.